Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's learn about the fundamentals of working with forms in Vue. If you're a front-end dev, you probably know that a considerable amount of work has to do with building forms. So it's really important that we understand how to capture user inputs using various types of form controls. We have inputs, text areas, single select controls, multi-select controls, single checkbox, checkbox group, and of course, radio buttons. Once we capture the values from the user, we also have to learn how to submit those form values. We are not talking about submitting to an API, but having a submit button that can at least log the form data to the console. As you can see, we have quite a bit to learn about form handling, which is why I've split this topic into two videos. In this video, we will understand the basics of form handling and how to work with inputs, text areas, single select drop-down controls, and multi-select controls. In the next video, we will learn about a single checkbox, a group of checkboxes, radio buttons, and also how to submit the form on a click button. Let's begin. Now before we dive into the code, let's first understand what exactly we want to accomplish with form handling in Vue. We know that each portion of the user interface is represented by a single .view file. For example, app.view. We also know that each view file contains a template block and a script block. It can optionally contain a style block, but we can ignore that for now. When we talk about form handling, we generally refer to the process of capturing data from the user, which we can later process depending on the business requirements. In a view file, the form controls are present in the template block, whereas the corresponding data resides in the script block. When a user fills in the form data in the UI, we need a way to propagate that data into the script block. At the same time, if there is a change in the data, for example, loading an already saved form data, we need a way to propagate that data back into the template block. We need our template and our data to always be in sync. Luckily for us, Vue provides another directive to handle this scenario. And that is the V model directive, which provides two-way binding. Two-way binding refers to binding from the template to the data and from the data back to the template. It basically ensures your model and your view are always in sync. Now that we have a background on form handling in Vue, let's dive into the code and understand the syntax and usage of this vModel directive. For our example, let's consider a job application form where the user is required to fill in the details. To ensure our form doesn't look too bad, I'm going to add some CSS. Now it's just some basic styling for labels and the different types of form controls. The CSS is available on my GitHub repo, so you can copy paste the same into your code as well. I'm also going to comment out text align center from the first style. All right, now let's get started with our form. In the template, I'm going to add a form tag. Within the form tag, I'm going to add a div tag for our first form control. And this form control is to gather the name of the user. So label, text is going to be name, and the for attribute is going to be name in lowercase. In the next line, let's add an input. Input type is equal to text. ID equals name, which corresponds to the for attribute on the label. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we have our name form control. We can type in Vishwas and the input reflects that. However, the data is currently in the template block. 
we need to send it into the script block. And I mentioned earlier that we would be using the vModel directive for that purpose. Now how does that directive work? Well, we begin by creating a data property that is going to keep track of the form control. So in the script block, I'm going to add a new data property. Let's call it form values. This property in turn will contain another property called name, which will track the input control value that we have just created. The initial value of name would be an empty string. Now you could, if you wanted to, omit the form values property, but it's very useful for this demo as you're going to see in a few minutes. Now once we have created the data property, we need to bind it to the form control. We do that using the vModel directive. So on the input element, vModel is going to be equal to the data property. And this is form values dot name. Now, if you were to enter the name, it would be tracked in the form values object. Let's stringify that object in the template block to visualize how the data binding works. So above the form tag, add another div tag and then the pre tag and then using mustache syntax json dot stringify form values and then pass in null comma two to display in separate lines. If you now save the file and head to the browser, you can see that we have the form values object and the name form control. In the form values object, we have the name property whose value is an empty string. If I type Vishwas, you can see the same in our stringified representation. So we have the binding from the template to the data property and back to the template. In this case, both to the input element itself and also the stringified representation. In other words, we have two-way binding. This is pretty much how the vModel directive works. Now what is great about vModel is that it understands the different types of form controls and binds values accordingly. Let's take a look at a few examples. Since the name control was the first usage of the vModel directive, I wanted to take some time explaining how it works. But now that you have a good idea, I'm going to go over the rest of the examples fairly quicker. All right, the second form control in our job applicant form is to collect the profile summary of the candidate. This requires three simple steps. Step one, add a new data property. Let's call it profile summary and set it to an empty string. Step two, add the HTML. So div tag, a label for attribute is going to be profile. The text is going to be profile summary. And then we are going to have a text area field. Text area and the ID is going to be equal to profile. For step three, we bind the data property using the vModel directive. So on the text area tag, the model is equal to form values dot profile summary. If you now save the file and take a look at the browser, we have our text area field. Type in profile summary and the same can be seen in the form values object. So I'm guessing you're now getting a hang of working with forms in view. Let's take a look at a select dropdown control next. Let's say that we need to ask the user from which country they are from. Again, this involves three simple steps. Step one, create a new data property called country and set it to an empty string. Step two, add the HTML. To save us some time, I'm going to copy paste the HTML. So we have a div tag and within the div tag, we have a label. The text is country and the for attribute is also equal to country. 
After the label, we have our select control. On the select tag itself, we have ID equal to country, which corresponds to the for attribute. In between the opening and closing select tags, we specify the different options for the dropdown. Now to keep this simple, we only have three countries. The first option has text select a country whose value is an empty string. Then we have India, Vietnam and Singapore as the three countries with their corresponding values. A straightforward select HTML with a few options. So that is our step two, adding the HTML. For step three, we bind the data property using the vModel directive. So on the select tag, vModel is going to be equal to form values dot country. If we now save the file and take a look at the browser, we have our select dropdown. Select a country and its value is reflected in the form values object. India, Vietnam, and Singapore. So that is a single select dropdown. Now it's also possible to have a multi-select dropdown. Let's say we need the job applicant to select a list of countries where they're willing to relocate to. This again can be done in three simple steps. Step one, add a new data property. Let's call it job location. This time though, the initial value is an empty array. Remember, multiple values can be selected. So the initial value is an empty array and not an empty string. Step two, we add the HTML. Now this is the same HTML for selecting a country with some modifications. So let's make a copy of the code and make the necessary changes. Copy and paste it. The first change is the text. Change the label to job location. The second change is the for and id attribute values. So this is going to be job hyphen location. The third and final change, add the multiple attribute on the select HTML element. Multiple. So that is our step two. For step three, bind the correct data property to the vModel directive. It is form values dot job location. If you now save the file and head back to the browser, you can see that we have a multi-select HTML element. We do have select a country, which we don't need though, so let's remove it. If you now head back to the browser, we have our job location with three countries. India, Vietnam, and Singapore. In the form values object, job location is an empty array to begin with. If I select India, the job location array now contains India. I can also select Vietnam, so control click, and job location now has India and Vietnam as the two elements. Control click, we have all the three countries in the job location array. Our multi-select element works as expected. All right, with that, we are halfway through the topic of form handling in Vue. Let's take a look at the second half of this topic in the next video.